The SOCOM series has served Sony well in acting as something of an ambassador of sorts for its online technology, helping move the network adapter and plenty of USB headsets into homes with PS2s. Fireteam Bravo is set to do the same for the PSP, offering up the most robust and full-featured online component of any PSP game yet. Fireteam Bravo features support for 16 players via either ad hoc or infrastructure mode, as well as headset support for voice communication. We've only been able to test out the headset for a short period of time so far, but what we've heard sounds great. A couple folks we heard online during the game sound a little bit iffy, but this could have been a problem with their own uh, connection. It shows great promise though, and we'll have more on that soon. The online play, even with 16 players, works fantastically. We've never had a problem with lag, or at least not anything that you wouldn't expect from an online game. And accuracy, jumping players, or anything of this sort has, hasn't been a problem at all. In short, the online implementation is smooth as silk. The in-game server browser has been copied over from SOCOM 3, which is to say it's great and simple to use while allowing you to find any game you want with ease. Good stuff here. The multiplayer maps aren't quite as large as SOCOM 3's, though they're plenty large enough for 16 players. The maps do do a pretty good job of stressing SOCOM's chess match style gameplay, where squads of players will run and set up at a spot and wait for the enemy to approach and see who makes the first move. SOCOM's multiplayer is great in this respect as you'll keep trying similar tactics over and over again, trying to perfect your approach. But since the enemy will tend to do things differently every time, even though you'll tend to run a set game plan, you'll constantly have to think on your feet since your foes will keep mixing it up. If you're a fan of SOCOM, you already know what I'm talking about here. When Zipper brought SOCOM over to the PSP, it had to make some concessions with regards to the series' reasonably complicated control scheme, so since you only have one analog stick on the PSP, the movement and aiming scheme had to be changed up. The analog stick moves you forward and back and aims left and right, so since you can't free look in this mode, the R button acts as your lock on. Alternatively, you can press right on the D-pad and go into free look mode, but your movement is restricted like this. You can move by holding the L button, but your aiming is locked into one place. This setup has some interesting strategy in there, as you're more accurate when you're in free look mode, but you can't move as freely. This part's kind of cool. The downside is that the lock-on mechanic makes it simple to find enemies since you can just constantly tap the R button while you're roaming around. So long as they aren't entirely hidden behind a solid object, you'll lock on to them if they're in front of you. It makes the game more Maverick friendly, allowing you to roam about on your own a little easier than the console versions of the game. This isn't necessarily a bad thing, but it is a bit different. It does essentially ruin the game for snipers though. The single player portion of the game works alongside the events in SOCOM 3. Fireteam Bravo is sent on some of the backup or side missions that the team from SOCOM 3 is on, so while you might go after a general in the console game, you might go after the next guy in charge or the group's weapon supplier or some such in Fireteam Bravo. The two stories tie together pretty well, though for a few of the missions it can be hard to figure out how the two games match up on the timeline, at least down to a specific day or whatever. It's certainly not bad though and the whole crossover thing works really well. One really cool way that the games are tied together is with something called crosstalk. Completing secondary objectives in either game will unlock content or change mission layouts in the other. So for example, if you come across some intelligence in Fireteam Bravo, you might get a more detailed map or mission overview or some such in SOCOM 3. The same works in reverse, so if you find something in SOCOM 3, it can unlock uh, weapons or whatnot in Fireteam Bravo. It's an excellent way to tie the two games together and to make the two teams feel like they're functioning as part of the same force even if they don't directly work together. One thing that's disappointing about the single player modes in Fireteam Bravo is that the AI is rather weak. Once it notices you, it's pretty good at taking cover and generally acts like you figure a third world soldier would, but they're not so good at spotting you. You can often run right up beside them without them noticing you, even to the point where you'd obviously be in their peripheral vision. Even clunking down a metal walkway at full speed won't alert them to your presence. The AI could certainly be better, to say the least. As a whole, Fireteam Bravo is easily one of, if not the best, online games for the PSP yet. It's certainly the most full feature, at least, and fans of the console games won't be disappointed with its online aspect. The single player mode is pretty strong, and the crossover stuff is great, but the AI is a little disappointing. Regardless, it's fun by yourself, but it's great online. If you're a SOCOM fan or want to see exactly what the PSP is capable of online, pick up Fireteam Bravo.